Yo, this is Underscore, welcome back to the channel for another video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over five different ways to make melodies from scratch. Hopefully this will show you different ways to think outside the box and be a bit creative or use different processes than what you normally do. Before we jump into the video, please do make sure you like the video and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Got a lot more cool stuff coming out over the next few months. So in this video, I'm going to be making five different melodies from scratch using different instruments. I'm going to keep the melodies relatively basic and just have one layer for each of them. And then in another video, we'll get into making full depth melodies. So the first sound I'm going to use is this piano, Dark Ballad. So the first thing that we want to understand is vibe and feel. Sometimes I'm going to jump in and say whatever comes out, but most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, I have a specific feeling or specific vibe or emotion that I want to convey. So for the first one, what we're going to do is say we want a dark and moody vibe. So when you're creating something dark and moody, sad or anything like that, you're going to generally work in a minor scale. I'm not going to get into too much music theory in this video because it's quite an in-depth thing. All music theory is are just rules and guides that make things easier. So if you don't have it, don't worry too much, but here we're going to use a little bit of it. So because we want dark and moody, we're working on the minor scale. A minor sound would be like this. It's A minor. If we were doing a major, it would be this. So you can tell straight away that because we know we're going for a dark vibe, we know that we want the minor chords. So when I make a melody, I like to have the chords done first. The chords are what sets the emotion and the vibe, and then you can add a top line afterwards. So for basic progression, we'll start off in A minor. So that's a really basic A minor chord. There are so many different progressions in the world, and there's a lot of common ones used in pop. For this, we'll use a standard progression that you probably hear all the time in different songs. So starting off with the A minor chord, and then moving it down to an E minor. Then we move it down to a D minor. And then back again to finish on the E minor. So it's a really basic progression you would have heard in thousands and thousands of different pop songs, hip hop, R&B, whatever. Now the trick is to make this a bit more interesting before we add the top line. The next thing we can do is start adding notes to this progression. So we could either add a seventh or a ninth. If you understand music theory, that will make sense. If not, it just basically means adding a different note in the scale that can change the emotion of a song. So here, if we add a note, it'd be this different vibe straight away. Or we can invert some notes. So all that would be is changing the octave of different notes of this chord. So the middle note, let's move it up. So it just gives a bit more width and makes it a bit more full. That's all I'm gonna do is just invert the middle notes. We instantly have a, a vibe and an atmosphere created. Now we just want to add a top line melody and this is going to be the interesting bit and the fun bit. So an easy way to do this is just starting off in the root notes. So we know that A minor is the root note of the chord and the song. We could just start off by drawing a note in A minor and then working from there. And when I'm doing this, I like to just work by trial and error. I'll just draw in notes until something sounds good. So for the first bar, I've just drawn in some notes that, as you can see, are pretty random. I've just drawn them in and played around with them. But now once we've got the first set, we sort of know where we're going to go from there. So now I can fill in the gaps in my head and just draw in the rest of the notes accordingly. So there we go, first melody done. So just four chords in a really basic popular pattern and then just drawing in notes for a top line until you get something that sounds good to you. Okay, so for the second melody idea, it's all about arpeggios. In so many popular songs, you'll be hearing arpeggios and arpeggiated melodies and rhythms and things like that because they're a really easy way to make something sound interesting and cool. So just to give you an idea of what an arpeggio is, it's when you play something like this. So that's an arpeggio, it's just going up and down. And you can have different arpeggios in different ways, but the most common way that I would do it is just up and down.
So in a lot of trap and hip hop stuff these days, you'll hear a lot of arpeggios because they sound cool and in any different instrument, you can do something interesting with them. So for this, I'm gonna once again, draw in the notes and we'll see what we can come up with. So we're gonna follow a progression with this. We don't want it just to repeat the same arpeggio over and over again, because it's a little bit boring. So you can see I just copied across the original two and I've just moved everything down a little bit so the progression continues. So it's actually a really basic arpeggiated melody. It sounds and looks a bit more complicated than it really is. So now I'm just gonna add the root notes to the progression so you can see what they are. So that's just this, starting off in C minor. And then going down to A sharp. And then going down to G and up to G sharp. Now, if I wanted to add the fifth to that, so I'm not gonna make it a full chord, but just to thicken it up a bit. So you can see how easy that was. It's just once again, following a basic progression and then just using an arpeggio to make it more interesting. So if you're paying attention, you'll see that so far progressions have been the key to both melodies. The progression of the chords is what drives the emotion that the listener's gonna feel. At least that's what I think anyway. So it's really good to understand progressions and learn progressions, I think as soon as possible to, to have that control over what people are feeling. Okay, so now we're on to melody three. So now the next thing that we're gonna be using is this moon guitar sound from Labs. So a really beautiful sounding sort of ethnic guitar. So now with this melody, we're just gonna be drawing in notes and it's not gonna be split into chords and a lead. This time it's gonna be just one melody throughout. We're just gonna draw in a sequence of notes that sounds interesting and catchy. So while we're not gonna be drawing in just straight up chords, we're gonna use the structure of a chord to know what to draw in. So that's an A minor chord, but I don't want to use the chord. So this time I'm going to move the notes across. And then I'm going to copy that across to what the next chord would be in the progression. In this case, it's going to be... And then again. So you can see once again, they're just based on chord progressions. If I was to move all the notes back to first place, they would just be chords like this. So using this trick of a combination of arpeggiation and sort of inversion, you can make something sound a lot more interesting. So now what we're gonna do is fill in the gaps so that it's not just a chord progression. Once again, trial and error, play it by ear, unless you already know in your head what you want to have it sound like. So there you go, once I filled in the notes, it sounds a lot more full and interesting. So now for the next melody trick, we're gonna use the same melody that we created here and start processing it to show you what you can do. So the first thing is gonna be half time. If you watch any other tutorials online, you'll probably see half time is used in a lot of music these days. It's really, really good. It's a really easy way to make something sound different and to add a bit of creativity to something that's a bit plain. Keep in mind that it's gonna drop everything an octave. So you need to generally move something up an octave if you're going to apply half time. Quite interesting, it makes it darker because it lowers an octave, but playing with the mix can give you a combination of both the original and the half time version. So, so dropping down the mix can be good enough to make it interesting. The 
next thing you can do would be effect tricks. So effect tricks is, if you don't know about this, is one of my favorite plugins to use as well because of the sort of random element to it. It's got a lot of good presets, but more than anything, I just like to go in and start clicking things because a lot of people will have the same progressions and the same melodic ideas and arpeggios and whatnot. But it's when you add the small touches that can really make a melody stand out. You play with the mix. So when I'm using effect tricks, what I like to do is just go in and just literally randomly color in different bits, like so. And that will allow me to sort of pick out the bits that sound good. You can see instantly it's just different, a bit more glitchy, a bit more interesting and different. And you could use this on the melody throughout the whole song or only specific parts like a breakdown or an outro or an intro. So it gives you a lot of variety in your options. Okay, so next we'll move on to the fifth and final melodic trick. And for this one, we are going to be using the this ethereal harp sounds that I've used in a few of my videos recently. It's a free sound, so I do recommend it. <laughs> This is a bit more of a sort of hack that I would use. It's not really as creative and unique as the other ways to make a melody. What I like to do is find a melodic loop and drag it in. Now Ableton has a really cool feature where I can drag an audio loop onto a MIDI instrument and it will convert it and give you the notes. From there, you have a foundation to play with. So for example, I'm gonna use a cymatics loop and we'll just find something that sounds really interesting. Here's one from their new Zodiac beta pack. So Dream State, it sounds like this. lush and beautiful. I'm gonna drag this into Ableton though and see you can choose drums, melody or harmony. Let's go with harmony. You can experiment as well because it will sound different and give you different notes depending on which one you choose. Okay so it's a ton of notes, a lot to work around but what we're gonna do is just take out a lot of the high notes, some of the lows, So you can see I've taken out a lot of notes, just a lot of the bulk of it. And from here, I've got a really basic structure and progression that sounds really nice. And I can just maneuver it to sound how I want. Okay, so I really like the main part of the progression. I like this change here from to that. So we just gotta move the notes From everything we've dragged in, we've just kept the beginning. And now it's just down to me to edit it and just go through, just move some notes around and add some notes in just to make it my own. So like so. And there you go. Hopefully in this video, you've seen the five different ways that I think about creating melodies and how I approach it and gives you some more options in your arsenal. Next week, we're gonna go into a video more about the drums and how I look at specifically building drum patterns from scratch and the sort of sounds that I like to use. I hope you found this useful. If you wanna see more content like this, please make sure you subscribe and leave a like, it really does mean a lot. But until next time, peace out.